Protecting your software. Reverse engineering protection, built-in and active, protecting your software all programs involved in security present vulnerabilities, it is up to the programmers to either eliminate them or provide detection. By reverse engineering a program, an attacker can make it do or not do anything he pleases. Button captions and string constants can be modified to trick the user into compromising security, and a simple swapping of pointers could result in sensitive information being leaked. The simplest countermeasure to these types of attacks is ensuring no program files have been modified. A more versatile tactic involves digital signatures and a program loader. Attackers will usually try cracking the program before breaking the crypto system, most programs are surprisingly weak against reverse engineering. A program is a series of instructions stored locally, if the user can run the program, then he can reverse engineer it, and change it to his will. With a good debugger, an attacker can trace the program through its interface messages and procedure calls. It is important to understand that all programs can be reverse engineered, but the task can be made very difficult. It has been common practice for years to camouflage security related functions, sprinkle decoy function calls, and implement anti-debugging procedures. These practices do not make programs tamper-proof in any way, but they certainly make them tamper-resistant. There is no simple solution to this problem, but the true goal remains to prevent the program from being modified. Strings contained within a program have tremendous influence, and can be a security weakness. They are used to communicate with the user, if strings are replaced with misleading information, an attacker could remove security compromised messages and prevent the user from detecting intrusion. These attacks only require a simple hex editor and are very easy to achieve. There are many ways to make his attack difficult. If the strings are encrypted properly, an attacker would have to reverse engineer the program, find the key, extract the decryption functions, solve the encryption functions, they aren't in the program, encrypt the fake strings, and swap the strings. With clever usage of pointers, the key can be sprinkled throughout the source code, and recombined without making any function calls that would attract an attacker's attention. Strings must be hidden to ensure users are not passed false messages, and thus compromising security. Pointers offer abundant opportunities to wreak data leaking havoc. Imagine a situation where a pointer to a record of the user's program settings was swapped with a pointer to the user's key, 
and the key was written to the registry, out in the open for the attacker to grab. These situations aren't heard of very often because programs are unprotected, and simpler means to obtaining data are usually available to attackers. If you name the key key nothing is left to the attacker's imagination. It is very easy to add, hashtag define key btn ok clicked at the beginning of the source code to rename all references to key while keeping the source code clear and consistent. BTN OK clicked is very misleading and will be ignored by attackers for a very long time unless the procedure you call it from is called get key. It is important that the naming scheme does not reveal which pointers, variables, and procedures are security related. It is simple enough to make spoofed version of the source code that will be compiled with ambiguous names for the release version so that reverse engineering reveals no significant information from the naming scheme. Names give attackers significant clues about a pointer's use, Use this as an advantage to confuse and misdirect attackers. Developers often run checksums or hash functions on the executable and compare it with a value hard-coded into the program. There are a few problems that emerge from this countermeasure. An attacker only has to change a conditional statement from if equals then to if then to follow the same procedure regardless of whether the checksums matched or not. Of course you can camouflage this conditional statement but dodging these countermeasures is no problem for an experienced cracker. Simply verifying if a file has changed is not enough, ideally modifying the executable would render it unworkable. Digital signatures offer a very sound and comforting solution. By signing the executable you ensure two things, anyone can run the program, and only you can create or modify it. For an attacker to modify the program he would have to break the digital signature algorithm or the private key. You can either use an unsigned portion of the program to decipher the rest of the program or use an external program, this is referred to as a program loader. In either case the attacker will only know the public key. If an attacker modifies the executable he will not be able to sign it properly, making detection simple. Another variety of this protection involves getting the public key from a server to prevent the attacker from modifying the public key hard-coded into the program. It is recommended to combine countermeasures. For example, digital signatures can be used in conjunction with a checksum. This method is behind Microsoft's Authenticode signatures, part of the Crypto API tools. Certified programs are guaranteed to come from the specified source, and to be unmodified. The problem with Authenticode is the program is only protected as online content, 
and once on your hard drive, there is no guarantee. Because of the complexity in designing programs which employ digital signatures natively, very few implementations are used, but it is likely some variety of them will be built into most applications in the next decade as security concerns increase amongst the consumer's priorities. C. Copyright DR Monkey 2000